Hey everyone, this is Mike and today I'm going to be trying something a little bit different. So yesterday was my first day tanking all of Eden's vs Savage and of course it was a thrilling experience for me. I haven't tanked any of the fights before other than a little bit of Shiva that we did over on the weekend last week. But other than that, I didn't really know what I was jumping into. Now of course I have cleared all of these fights since week 1 as a DPS. So I knew most of the mechanics that were going on, just a little bit of variation as to learning what tank mechanics specifically I had to do and I thought maybe I would make a video on maybe other people that want to try out tank as well but don't really know where to begin and maybe help them out that way as well kind of show you what my thought process was here and there. Now first of all this mechanic right here is something that you can't really greet as a melee because this is animation based not um, like cause bar based. So technically I could have gotten an extra GCD there um, before running away from the boss because it is waiting for the animation and not for when the cast bar finishes so you have like a little bit of extra time uh, right there. For the most part tank mechanics aren't really all too heavy in this fight, the only annoying thing about doing it on a gunbreaker is the fact that every single time that you need to move the boss it is going to be during a burst window and of course moving a boss during a burst window is not so very fun for a gunbreaker. Another cool thing is that the tank busters right here sync up kind of as well, so as soon as you see that red marker appear on your co-tank, you can start popping your cooldowns as the actual tank buster of the boss is going to be pretty much right after that. One of the main things that I screwed up in the first run that we did is right here as well. I forgot to take one of the orbs, because if you are doing the storm clouds, which is something that I was doing as a caster, you don't need an orb for that, but if you are taking the AoE as yourself because you have like the thing in the middle that you get targeted with then you do need to have one of those stacks in order to not get the vulnerability up marker. It's also something that you'll see happen right here as well is that I'm going to be having to grab an extra orb because it is something that in our group we didn't really care about. For the most part there isn't really all that much group damage going out after this mechanic resolves, so because our healers had enough tools, they didn't really care about other DPS players or the healers having a vulnerability up stack, but of course since the main tank is taking a tank buster right after here as well, together with the fact that they are of course taking out attacks, uh, they did want to have the main tank at least have a stack for this so they didn't get a vuln up. Again, this is another part where you have to move the boss and of course Gunbreaker has its no mercy window here, uh, so I just kinda take it slow and basically delay my burst a tiny bit uh, just so that I can reposition the boss for the next mechanic because I did of course play it safe, go for the clear, it was just weeklies um, so when we're gonna optimize that stuff we might do some things a little bit different if you do not move the boss immediately to the middle right after the tank buster goes off he'll basically stay in that spot until now basically because the boss really does not like to move uh, right after that tank buster so when the tank buster goes off, immediately move over to the middle to position him there, if you want to have him there, of course. Because um, otherwise the boss is just going to stay on the edge for a very long time until he finishes casting Thunderstorm. Our melees kill each other here um, because they thought they were going to be on the other sides of the boss, but not too big of an issue right there. Then, of course, this is another co like off-tank mechanic. I uh, kind of forgot to mention this, but usually whenever... Um, like he does the, what's it called, executor summons or something like that. You need to make sure that as the off tank you have three stacks in order to have that thing chase you around. And then also usually whenever that thing appears there will also be a tank buster on the main tank following up as well. As you could see at about the same time that the thing spawned I got a tank buster on me as well. And then we have another just raid white AoE. So this is basically the same thing that you would be doing as a normal DPS as well. And then I believe it is time for Chain Lightning. Oh no, it's actually Fury's 14. So for this one, again, grab an orb. As a tank, you do have the responsibility to stop the Fury's 14 from killing your whole team. Uh, this was my first time seeing it. I do not take the first one. I take the second one on Gunbreaker. Because uh, my Paladin is going to hallowed ground the first one. Um, but I wasn't really sure what to expect. Because normally I'm on the other side of the arena for this. Um, so what you do is where he is tethering to is going to be the opposite side of where he's going to jump towards. So the side that isn't tethered uh, is basically going to be his jump position. And then here I just play it safe, use my lightning shot or whatever that thing is called uh, to make sure I grab my thing. And then we'll see in just a second uh, how it kind of looks like when you are the one that is taking the, like, the orb or the Ramu charge, I guess you could say. And again, we have to move the boss. Of course, it is right during... A uh, mechanic for Gunbreaker as well. I'm gonna keep the boss here for just a second because it is going to be the donuts. Um, so that is why I just keep it here just to make sure that people don't overlap. 
I'm thinking that once we start optimizing this fight, I might just keep him in the corner until that's done. Uh, and then very quickly pull him towards the middle because I do have a little bit of time right there. And uh, because of that, I forgot to use one of my rev divides during my No Mercy. But that's something that we can look at when we do optimization for this fight. For this one, Tank Buster happens pretty much straight after the Chain Lightning starts spawning, so you can kind of look at it like Chain Lightning starts, Tank Buster immediately after, so you can like pop your cooldowns right there. Uh, you could also use, for example, your Heart of Light here as well uh, at the start of that cost, because the Chain Lightning does do damage, uh, and then of course it will also mitigate the Tank Buster itself, so it could be relatively useful for that. And then towards the end of this, we do have another uh, summon thingy, forgot the name of it, uh, so make sure that as the off-tank you do have 3 orbs, the Chain Lightning does eat your orb if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you gotta make sure that you have that one available to you. Uh, you basically get them as fast as possible, those orbs. And of course we also have Thunderstorm here, which of course you also need an orb for. Uh, so you definitely need to make sure that you have 3. Towards the end of this one, we also have the, what's it called again, the Step at Leader. Uh, so make sure that you don't step into those twisters. But again, this is pretty much the same stuff that you're used to from playing as a DPS as well. This doesn't really change much in between like going from tank to like a normal DPS. We have another tank buster and then we go into the second Furies 14. Again for this one, grab an orb. And then it is time for me to fail this mechanic. Because I totally forgot to press any cooldowns. I was so focused on trying to actually not fail the mechanic and kill my team that I kind of totally forgot to uh, care about my own safety here. But uh, you'll see that happen in just a second. This was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be because when we first started doing this, um, back during prog, we actually wiped this mechanic quite a few times, if I'm not mistaken. And all you really have to do is you just stand on the spot. Again, you go opposite to where Ramu is tethering. Uh, so he's going to jump to A again. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yes. And then you just stand on here and press the duty action, as you can see above my aggro list there is a duty action. You do need to press a cooldown here, usually people uh, like to invuln this, I was trying to press it towards the end as well, but I was a little bit too late, uh, which is why I ended up dying to the charge. Of course, if you are pressing the duty action, you did your job, and if you die, it's not too, like, basically not the end of the world. Uh, I am very quickly gonna grab an orb here, because of course this judgment vault will kill you if you don't have an orb, like you could see happening to our healer, uh, since he was basically animation locked into the healer LB3 animation. Uh, our team is thinking of re, like renaming to team heal LB strat or something like that, um, because we just end up using it so much, which you'll see in the future as well. Uh, quickly grabbing an orb here again as well, because I did forget to grab an orb um, so that I don't get that extra von stack, of course not too bad if I would have it, uh, since I am not the one tanking here, but still saves our healers a little bit of a hassle, and I believe you also take less damage from it, I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, and then of course you do have that rate right over here, but usually we kill it around this time, uh, usually we kill it actually a little bit earlier as well, but we had a couple of people dying, we had a heal LB of course, uh, and all of the kind of stuff made it a little bit slower than usual, but that's pretty much how I ended up tanking this fight. It's relatively simple to tank, the only thing that's really annoying about it is the fact that you just have to move the boss whenever you have a burst window on Gunbreaker, so that's kind of annoying, uh, which is something that we're probably going to be looking into when we start optimizing this fight uh, to kind of see how we can do that better. But that's going to be it for me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the, contents in the comments down below, and then I'll definitely be doing it uh, for the next three fights as well, which I, of course, also have my POVs from, from yesterday. If you want to see how my first kills went and kind of how I thought about uh, doing certain mechanics. I'm gonna pause this right here, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for me. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me, and I'll see you in the next one.